Hi there. This is a uh, little demonstration of how to uh, make use of the uh, data flash logging on Argicopter. So I'm going to run through a few things, um, including uh, how to enable or disable um, certain um, information from being logged to the data flash. Um, I'm also going to show you how to download it, download the data flash after a flight, and then finally uh, we'll do a little bit of analysis on those uh, you know data flash logs uh, to see what they've got in them. So, uh, first of all, I have connected a uh, APM 2.5 to my computer with the um, mini USB cable. Uh, it is COM10. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just look at what information is being logged. So, I click on the terminal screen. I just wait a bit. And there we are there. We're in the uh, CLI, the command line interface. So, we want to go to the logs menu. So, we just type in logs. Right? Here we are here. So this shows me a couple of things. It shows me that I have uh, four logs on the data flash at the moment, and it shows me the start and the end. I believe that's the the page. Um, so you know I can see, for example, that this this log is very short. Uh, these two are a little bit are a little bit longer. Um, it also shows me uh, you know which which information is being logged to the data flash. So um, you know attitude medium. Uh, GPS, PM is for performance monitoring, C tune is control tuning, N tune is navigation tuning, CMD is commands, usually from the from the ground station. That's the, those the information that I'm being logged or that's being logged, or the message types that are being logged. Now um, in the config.h file is actually a full list of all the different types of uh, of logging that you can do. Um, you know, most people uh, don't look at this file, of course, so it's pretty hard to know, you know, uh, which which things you want to turn on. Um, but um, you know, some of the very common ones uh, would be uh, raw. Uh, sometimes it's called IMU actually in uh, in 2.92, um, but in 2.91 it's called raw. Uh, that shows you actually raw IMU information like uh, gyroscope gyroscope values, accelerometer values, that kind of thing. Say I wanted to turn that one on, I would type in enable raw. And there it is, right? And of course, if I want to disable it, I could go, you know, disable. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't want the uh, the GPS or something. Do that. Any anyway, in general, though, I would say that the ones you want to have on are, you know, attitude medium. Um, there is also an attitude fast. That's the same information. It's just done at, at 50 hertz instead of uh, 10. Uh, GPS definitely. Performance monitoring. Yeah, it's a very small message, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you know these two are pretty good. Um, raw is only you know it's a it's uh, output very quickly. Um, you know uh, you know very high frequency the data flash that can cause performance issues. So you know you shouldn't turn it on all the time. Um, but you know if you're going to do some analysis on I don't know accelerometer values or something like that, you might you turn it on. Otherwise, leave it disabled. Um, another good one is motors. So. Um, the motors log will show you the individual output being sent to the motors. Uh, some other interesting ones is PID will show you the um, individual outputs from a particular PID controller. Again, uh, if you're if you're tuning a particular uh, you know controller with the channel six um, knob, I term I think you probably don't want to use that. Um, iNav is for initial navigation. So if you're um, you know, this is a useful message if you're uh, if you want to determine if the inertial navigation estimate of your, you know, attitude, sorry, your altitude or your your position is accurate versus, say, the GPS or the or the barometer, this is a good message to turn on. So you could, you know, turn on iNav like that. Anyway, uh, so those are that's how to turn it on and off um, the different messages. Of course, now you know after doing that, you would, uh, you know, obviously go for a flight, come back. Uh, you come into this menu again, and then maybe you want to download some logs. So you have this log download button, and you push it. And then basically you'll see the same thing here. And you could click on this and download this log. It will be downloaded. You can see how far it's gotten here, and it tells you when it's done. Uh, these log files appear in the same directory where you've installed the mission planner in the logs directory. So I just downloaded a dot, uh, sorry, uh, log number two. So here I have these little, these three little um, 
files produced. So what are these files? Uh, I don't know what log GPX is, but uh, this is the main data flash log file. The KMZ is a, uh, is a file for Google Earth. So basically the mission planner has parsed this .log file and um, produced a little Google Earth file, which you can double click on and you can see what actually happened during that flight. So this may not be very interesting one. We'll have to have a look. Yeah, see, there's, there's nothing of interest in this log file. So that was not a good example. Let me go to one which is interesting. So for example, I did an RTL earlier today. And here is the KMZ file for this flight. All right, so here it is here. Double click on that. There we go. There's all the different parts of the flight. Great. So here I can see exactly what happened, or not exactly, but definitely get a very good idea of what happened here. So, for example, I can see that I started off in stabilized mode right here. I flew around a little bit, and then I engaged in RTL. It looks like I started here. Oops, I engaged in RTL. You can see the join. You can see how it climbed up to whatever the RTL altitude is, which is something like, I don't know, 15 meters, I think. Um, and then it came down and landed you know, quite you know, well, a few meters from uh, from where it started. Anyway, for giving you a, a you know a good overview, the, the KMZ files are are really useful. Okay, next uh, let's look at the data flash file itself. So uh, there are, there are two ways to look at it. Um, you know the easiest way is to look at it inside of the uh, using the mission planner itself. So you can click on this log browse button. Right? You can go and look at the file here. So I went into that directory where I put the file. So I opened the wrong one. There's three that we were just looking at there. Get this little window. So what's in this file? Um, first of all, right at the top, it shows you, you know, which version you're running. Also tells you what kind of board you've got. It tells you a little bit about how much free memory you've got. Uh, then it's got all kinds of settings, basically um, you know, all the settings like you know, what are your radio min, max, what kind of frame are you using, quad, hexa. Um, it tells you, you know, like, do I have sonar enabled, flight modes, um, all, all kinds of things here. You know, is my, uh, what's my compass offsets? And then it has a list of every single parameter and the value. So this is just like what you see when you, uh, you know, the, these, these are all the parameters that you can see in the advanced parameters list of the, uh, the mission planner. So for example, if you if you look at this one particular parameter, you want to know what it means, you could, you know, come back over here, right, to the configuration screen, connect, sorry for the delay, Almost there. Right, so then you could go into to here, right, an advanced parameters list. And I can see all those parameters, and it has a little description here as well about what it means. So so in that way, you know, you could you could come back and check what, what the particular parameter means. Anyway, uh, sorry for that diversion. Uh, let's just go back and uh, pull up the file again. So here we are. Uh, so there's a list of all the parameters. Uh, they are sorted by the order that they appear in the EEPROM. So you can see it's not alphabetical. Sorry, um, that's the way it goes. Um, all right, so then below all of that, below all the parameters, you will find this. This is actually the moment that the, uh, the copter started and you know all the, all the data is below. Um, so some of the messages that are they're interesting. Uh, this is the the mode that you're in. So this is stabilized mode. This is the throttle cruise value, which means this is an estimate of uh, what your copter thinks your throttle needs to be to maintain a hover. That's what's always displayed beside a mod message. 
there's all these little data messages and event messages that appear. Um, you know, these uh, these basically tell you the the state of of RG Copter. So it's a bit field. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much, but if you do want to know uh, the data ones, I won't bother going into at all. But the the EV ones, which are event messages. Um, a bit cryptic, but you, if you see an EV and a 25 and you wonder what that means, if you go into the actual code and go to the defines.h file and then have a look at around line oh, whatever 300 or so, 310, you can see them all here. So EV25, that is a set home command. That's what that means. And in fact, if you look right below it, you'll see the CMD. And this command is setting a waypoint. Uh, two, I think, means set waypoint. It's waypoint zero. Um, and here's the lat and lawn value. So this this little command here is telling you, okay, your home was set to this lat lawn. The the periods are missing there, so you'd have to put. I know it's 35 point something, 139 point rest. Yeah, so uh, that might be interesting if you want to see exactly what your home location was set to. Um, you know, all kinds of other messages, GPS messages here. So if you wanted to see what your uh, you know what your GPS altitude was, you could plot this. There you go. That's what my GPS altitude was. And it probably matches very closely with, with this from with Google Earth because actually um, you know this this track is generated with um, actually it's probably generated from the, the barrel alt, um, not this particular alt, but in any case, it should match. Um, some other interesting messages. Probably the most interesting message is the ATT message. So the attitude message. This tells you your roll, pitch, and yaw, uh, and it's extremely useful because, for example, if you want to see how well your uh, copter is tracking towards the pilot input, you can map your roll in versus your actual roll right here. So if you look at this, you can see how well is it tracking. Hmm. This this is not great actually. Um, you know, it's not bad. It's it's roughly tracking here. Maybe it was a windy day, but like it's it's quite off in certain places here. That's off by right here, off by four degrees. So you know, we normally record angles in centigrees. So this is you know the roll in the pilot uh, requested roll is two degrees. The actual roll is up to six degrees. Yeah, not not terrible. Um, but you know, maybe maybe some more tuning needs to be done. Uh, you know, it's gotten too small here, so I can set the scale to default and it bounces back. This part looks okay. Um, by the way, the, the actual rule always uh, trails behind the, the uh, requested rule, of course, because, you know, it takes a little bit of time for the motors to wind up, etc., to, um, you know, to achieve the altitude that you're asking for, achieve the attitude that you're asking for. Anyway, um, another useful thing, though, is uh, during a crash, if you've had a crash for some reason, you can look at the roll in versus the roll, or the pitch in versus the pitch. And if you see them diverge, um, you know, massively, for example, say the desired roll stays flat, but the actual roll goes off to 25 degrees or, or 85 degrees, whatever it is, that almost always indicates a, um, a hardware failure because the copter did not want to go over that far in those cases. Um, but it went over for some reason. That's almost always a motor failure. Some other kind of hardware problem. Um, you can also look at your yaw. Your yaw in and your yaw is a little bit tougher um, because uh, the yaw input is, is an angle from you know, 0 to 45 degrees. Uh, that's what the pilot inputs. You know, the pilot does not input exactly a, a yaw heading, right? What this is showing is a heading. So you know, it's a little bit harder to, to compare the two. So you can see that my, my heading did move around a bit. But yeah, it flew fine from my point of view, so I guess I guess this is okay. Again, it's all in centi. Uh, actually, this is yeah in in I guess it's centi degrees. So it looks like you can see it varied from uh, you know from by uh, well 15 degrees. That's that's not terrible. Um. Okay, some other uh, messages. Uh, you can look at the uh, control tuning. So yeah, this is the one that has your, your altitude on it. So say, for example, you if you have a sonar attached uh, and you want to compare it to your barrel altitude, you could 
you know, map these two, the barrel out and the sonar out. Fortunately, I don't have those. I don't have the sonar attached. Uh, you can also see your throttle in. So this is the pilot's throttle in. Now this part would have been the manual part of the flight. And then you can see this would have been the RTL where it's where it's very smooth because obviously I wasn't touching the, the throttle when it was an RTL because there's no point. Um, you can see what the throttle was from the autopilot with the nav throttle right here. I'm lucky. Maybe not. Uh, and climb rate, copter's climb rate. So, say for example, uh, barrel and climb rate. You can see that here. Yeah. Uh, that's that's about it, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't have a, an example of a raw message here, um, but that can also be used to uh, to check out your um, accelerometer. How much um, vibration you're seeing on your accelerometer? Don't have an example of that. Sorry. Um, okay. So one one last thing that I often do when I'm analyzing a log is I actually pull up the dot log file in Excel. Like this. So this is the regular logs directory. This is the place where I put the log files. So we can log three. So I'd open this. It is a uh, mostly a CSV uh, delimited file, so delimited, comma, separated. Some of them have a semicolon though, so you use that. Um, there we go. Uh, I've already gone over what's in the file, so I won't go over that again. Uh, but one thing that I often do is do a filter. So I look for the startup message and I start filtering from the very next line. And in particular, to have a look at the mod message. So, for example, say I'm looking at this log file, and I want to know, okay, you know, where was I? Um, you know, when when this event happened here, what you know, what flight mode was I in? You know, you could you could you know trundle through the logs here, you know, rolling through trying to manually find them. That's that's pretty tough. So, you know, if you open up an Excel and you filter it, you can see the exact line number here. So, you know, I can see that I entered in RTL mode from from 802, which would make sense, right? Because that this sudden increase in altitude uh, that would come from, you can probably see it start from 802. Yeah, right around there. Of course, if I, you know, the lines here, of course, match the lines here. So if I go to line 802, I'll find the that message. 804, so two lines off, but there it is. Um, there's also some other things, um, for example, that you, you can't see very easily uh, with the, with the uh, Mission Planner viewer here. Uh, that is, for example, the PM message. It's the performance monitoring message. Click on this. Um, so uh, the PM message um, tells you basically how many of your main loops have, have been running slowly. Um, so if you have a, um, you know, if you have a lot of data flash logging turned on, for example, or or your copter's running slow for some other reason, you can you can check this PM message in, and you have a definitive, you know, um, log of, of how badly it was running. So, for example, here let's have a look at this one. Uh, two seven six seven. Go down the line. Two seven six seven. I think they dumped out into the log every uh, ten seconds or so. Two seven six seven. There it is. There. So clicking on this um, tells you know I have this nice little. Um, you know, column headers at the top here, so it's easier to look at. So number of slow loops was 94 out of a total number of loops, which was 1,000. So roughly 10% of my, um, you know, loops were running over the uh, 10 milliseconds that they're supposed to take. Uh, if you look at it, actually, you know, most of them are not quite that bad, actually. That's almost the worst. A lot of the time it's around, you know, 10 or, or so. You know, it'd be great if this was always zero, uh, meaning that we never have any loops that take longer than uh, 10 milliseconds. Um, but, uh, you, know, you know, there's a lot going on in the software, so, uh, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, the software does have some, um, does actually record the time of the loop, so it's no reason to freak out about, uh, about it taking this long. That's not terrible. Um, you know, in some people's logs, you'll see that this number is 350, um, and that, that means that basically, you know, a third of their loops are taking longer than they should, which is not a good thing. Uh, this is actually the maximum amount of time that the loop took, you can see here as well. 
So the slowest loop during that period. So this one here, uh, that's uh, 17 and a half milliseconds. So it should take 10. It took 17. Was the worst case. Um, you know, yeah, that's not great. Um, but I, you know, I've seen worse. It flew fine as well, so I'm not, not too concerned about that. Uh, that is about it, I guess. There is probably, you know, I hope that gives you an idea anyway of how to, um, you know, how to, how to look at your logs. I guess I went over these things about, um, yeah, okay, so, okay, actually, let me just go over a couple more things. Um, you know, often, uh, if you've seen some of my uh, analysis of people's log files, I see pretty little graphs. Um, it's they're almost always taken straight from here. You can just do this, right? You can just um, copy the image right here, and then ta-da! There you go. Um, you know, paste it into, into Paint. Um, you know, I guess you also saw that you can do the zoom in. Uh, you can, you know, and then you know, you should just you know, zoom back the default by doing this. Set right mouse button click and set scale default. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, you can actually load up uh, more than one um, file at a time as well. You can actually load the same file more than once. So here I have this one logged. Maybe I want to keep looking at this, but I also want to look at another part of the log. I can do this again. I can just open it up again over here. So, you know, here's the same log. Oh, okay, that error was because I have it open in Excel at the same time. So let me... another viewer that we can look at some other information at the same time. So I don't know. You know maybe we want to be looking at uh, you know how far apart and you know, how far were we from the you know navigation tuning method you can look at how far our lat and lawn were were from the target. So there it is there. You know, look at the two at the same time. Um that is about it. Hope it was useful. Thanks. Bye.